Good afternoon and welcome to the 33rd John Gasson at Jig Competition and the first virtual John Gasson Jig Competition. Sadly, because of Covid, we can't all be together in the Blackmore Marquee. However, there are advantages. Firstly, we have an audience in the UK and around the world, some people who just couldn't get to Devon in an August Sunday afternoon. So welcome to you, welcome to everybody who's watching this live and later the recorded version. Another advantage is that you can watch this performance from the comquat of your own living room. You can sit comfortably. We're going to go straight through, two hours, no breaks, so hopefully you've got drinks, you've got beer and sandwiches or wine and canapes, tea and biscuits, and no, it's not gin o'clock yet, but hey, no one's watching. If you want to relive the Blackmore experience, make sure you are sitting cross-legged on a hard floor. Look up now and you'll see the seagull walking across the roof of the marquee and you'll feel that Devon breeze with a hint of rain always in it wafting through the marquee and it's going to get hotter. Although we can't be live, the show must go on and the show will go on. We have 10 solo jigs and six double jigs. Some of those will be danced live and live streamed and some of them are recorded. And as a backup, in case anything goes wrong, we have a video record of each one that we can turn to. So we're trusting the technology. We have a team behind us. A lot of work has gone into making this happen. So enjoy the next couple of hours. We are going to also take advantage of this format to delve into the history of the competition and we're going to show you the winners, the first winners of each category. Some of those categories were right from the start or early on, some of them introduced more recently. Separate to that, I have recorded interviews with those winners, which you won't hear today, but will be available on the YouTube channel in the next two or three weeks. So watch out for that and we'll post links. Let's get on with the dancing. And we're not going to start yet with last year's winner. What we're going to start with way back in 1988, the first competition, and our first winners were dancer Andrew Jones, musician Tim Bull. And here is the winning jig from 1988.
were the winners of the first competition and a youthful John Bray. Okay, sorry about that. Our worthy winners last year were Toby Melville, dancer, and Father John Melville, musician, the dance Jockey to the Fair. Wait, um, yeah. mm -hmm. Go. John Melville, and that wasn't a green lawn, that was a patchy green trampoline, as I'm sure you're aware. We're going to go into the competition now. We have four judges live. I'll be introducing those one by one in between dances. Let's get straight on with the competition. And first dancer, David Thompson, with musician John Watcham. They are from Brighton Morris. Dancing Longborough, and the jig is Epping Forest. Please welcome David and John. Unmute. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
and John Watcham on a very breezy day somewhere near Brighton. Before the second jig, I'm going to introduce you to the first of our judges. We have four judges, two on music, one on performance, sorry, two on technical, one on performance and one on music. And let me introduce the music judge first. Jackie Oates is our music judge and also continuation judge, following on from last year. Jackie is a mainstay of English traditional music. She is steeped in the Morris as both her parents danced. Jackie has played for Morris Offspring and danced with Summer Towns and Ladies Morris. Jackie is also a past winner, memorably playing two fiddles simultaneously as musician for her husband, Jack Worth. Please welcome Jackie Oates. And Jack, briefly there. Excellent. Let's move on to our second dance, and the dancer is Sarah Matthews, as is the musician, Sarah Matthews. No relation, or perhaps same person. The team, Willington Morris, Tradition Ducklington, and the dance is the appropriately named Lockdown. Please welcome Sarah Matthews.
Sarah Matthews. And if you are on Facebook or on YouTube, you can add your comments if time allows and if they are appropriate. They may get mentioned by myself at some point during the show. The unprecedented situation we're in has given rise to a show that is different than any other and hopefully next year we'll be back in the Blackmore Garden and the record of this event will show in history just what a weird time we were going through where we were forced to dance in our gardens and in our living rooms. But the show is going on and it's fantastic that we've got so, so many dancers that have stepped up and are up for the competition in these circumstances. Let me introduce a second judge. The first of the technical judges, Sally Waring. Sally was dragged into Morris dancing at Bath University by her friend Jill. Many years later, Jill revealed that this was because she fancied one of the Morris men. Sally, who many of you will know well, has been, she says, in about 11 sides. You know you're a Morris tart when you lose count of the number of teams you're in. Uh, including Windsor, who she joined in 2008 as an apprentice fool. Sally was one of the Morris advisors for Sidmouth Festival for over 10 years and now attempts to organise the Morris dancers at Warwick Folk Festival. Sally Waring, who we now briefly see, momentarily see. Excellent. Let's move on to the next Entry, dancer John Sweeney, musician Mike Aylan from East Kent Morris. The tradition, Cantia, which I believe is their own tradition, and the jig is Two for Joy. Please welcome John Sweeney and Mike Aylan. <laughs> John Sweeney and Mike Aylan. And though you are situated by yourself or maybe with one or two others in your bubble, please go wild with applause and whoop and cheer just as if you were in the Blackmore Garden with 600 other people. It'll feel a bit odd to your neighbours, but hey, who cares? Our next judge that I'm going to introduce is Rhys Borman. Rhys is a technical judge. He started dancing at the age of 12 with Mad Jacks Morris from Hastings and has been in multiple teams since going to university, covering Cotswold, Rapper and Molly. He first entered the jig competition in 2012, which was also his first Sidmouth. So young. His favourite memory is of 2015, where he won the double jig competition with his twin Owain 
as Clausentia Morris with Briony Leach playing. After a few near misses, he won the solo jig competition in 2018, again with a fantastic Briony playing. Rhys heeded the judges' con feedback each year to help him improve, and as a result, he's now a judge himself, Rhys Borman. Our next contestants. Sorry, let me put that in the singular, contestant. Because Rick Titley Sage is the dancer and also the musician, or in this case, singer. The team White Rose Morris, Tradition Sherborne, and the dances Orange in Bloom. Please welcome Rick Titley Sage. Gentle perfume of carnation and pearls and orange in bloom. To lovers, it will call on the sea strength as the sun touch the sea. One day his blood stand and call out to sea and avoid you stay and not follow me. For I take the king's shilling to fight in laws on the We seem to have problem with the live transmission there, so we're going to go to the fallback of the pre-recorded video. Different venue, same person. Let's go for the video. The sea wind does blow the gentle perfume of carnation and rose and orange in bloom. Two lovers did walk all on the sea strand as the sun touched the sea. One fate is not stand, but give me my love. I'm called out to sea, and I pray that you stay and not follow me. For I take the king's shilling to fight the king's wars on the broad seas and far away shores. But when I return, I'll come back to you to take your sweet hand by the orange in bloom. Sweet William, how could you let this be that the king's cruel wars should take you from me? Must I abide on England's shores and pray with each morn that each ship is yours? Let me sail with you one day ocean wide and not part it be but fight at your side. Then when you return, I'll be there with you, and both will come back to the orange in bloom. Oh, Johnny, I cannot take you with me from England's shores across the broad seas. War is no place for love, my Johnny, its place is back here, and our time will be. Sweet William, how do I know? That you'll come back here to me, not slain upon foreign shores, nor on the raging sea. But till you return to me, you will prove true till you find me by the orange and bloom. No letters I'll write from each foreign shore That you will know I'm not lost in this war Hold this ring close, keep it at your side I will return on another day's tide William, he has sailed on the next flowing tide While his own love has watched 
from far off and bowed his head down and cried till William's return from the ocean blue to England's rose and the orange in bloom. Rick Titley Sage dancing and singing in House and Garden. Time now to introduce our fourth and final judge, judging the performance category and a great performer himself, Simon Pipe. Simon is a founder of the Outside Capering Crew, an innovative team that was formed as a direct result of this competition. Its members have been winners several times and a number of its dances started life as competition jigs. It was 25 years ago this weekend that Simon first entered and won with a back of punch. He's entered the solo competition nine times and won five times, a record. He entered the double competition five times without winning before being pressured out of retirement last year by daughter Molly and we'll see more of them later. Simon is our performance judge. Our next dancer is Justin Morrison and the musician Robin Harrison. It's one of the wonders of technology that we may have problems with broadcasting from this country and hopefully don't have problems from broadcasting live from all the way from Toronto. So they're from Toronto Morris Men, the tradition Pine Cones and the jig is The Swell. Please welcome from Toronto, Justin Morrison and Robin Harrison. Justin Morrison and Robin Harrison from Toronto. Before we go to our next competition jig, let's delve back into the history. And after the first early years of the competition, we were feeling that we needed some fresh blood. We were getting a number of the same entrants and wanting to encourage new people to take up jig competition, which is what this competition has been about all of its life encouraging jig dancing. And so for 2000, we introduced the category Best New Entrant. And what we're about to see are the first winners of that category, the dancer Sue Hamer Moss with musician John Go Lightly. Please welcome. Sue Hamer Moss and John Go Lightly. Thank you. 
Sue Hamer Moss and John Golightly, and I don't know who the MC was. Someone youthful looking. A uh, quick correction our second jig, Sarah Matthews, for some reason I had a lockdown as the name of the jig, and that's not the case. It was Jockey to the Fair. Correction there. Let's move on to our next contestant. The dancer is Jackie Stamp, musician Wendy Wood. The team, Seven Sisters Molly, and the tradition is their own Seven Sisters tradition. Seven Sisters, a new Molly team loosely based on Paddington Pandemonic Express's tradition, one that Kerry Fletcher was very, very involved with many years ago. And this jig was written during lockdown on the team's weekly Zoom meetings. The dance is called Mugby Junction, Mugby Junction. So please welcome Jackie Stamp and Wendy Wood.
Jackie Stamp and Wendy Wood, appropriately visored and masked. Before the next contest, let me just mention that one of the categories that is more challenging to judge this year is audience appeal. And we are going to have that judged and you can be part of it. So at the end of the doubles jig, there will be a form put up with the opportunity for you to vote for your best jig in terms of audience appeal. So pay attention, watch out and be ready for that one and your votes will count. Our next dancer is Ben James, musician Sean Musgrave. The team is Men of Swain's Eye and the tradition Field Town. The dance is Old Molly Oxford. Please welcome Ben James and Sean, Mo Sean Musgrave. James and Sean Mosgrave. I'd like to thank our sponsors. We have a considerable number of sponsors who make this competition possible. There's quite a lot of costs and this year with all the technology involved in live streaming, uh, more costs. Our sponsors are Dave and Fee Lock, Trevor Owen, Janet Dowling, John's old school friends, Kerry Fletcher, Dixie Lee, the outside capering crew, the Seven Champions, and Chris and Tracy Rose. And also, this year, a one-off donation from the sadly now defunct Oyster Morris. And that certainly helped to defray the costs we've incurred this year. So thank you to everybody. Our next dancer is Bess Wood and musician Dave Hood. The team is Winterbourne Morris, tradition at Bampton and the jig is backer pipes and Bess learnt this in her after school club. Please welcome Bess Wood and Dave Hood. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bess Wood and Dave Hood. Let's go back again through the history before our next competition jig. And by 1995, the competition was well established. And one of the features of the competition over the years had been some odd, unusual, different, humorous entries. Some wonderful, some less wonderful. But in 1995, there was a particular dance that people thought was fantastic and wasn't going to be a winner. And it was thought, wouldn't it be great if we could have some form of recognition for dances like that? And thus, the Audience Appeal Prize was instituted in 1996. And though it's a straightforward jig, our appeal winners, the first year we ran it in 1996, winners were Vivian Bailey and Mel Burden as a musician, dancing lumps of plum pudding. So let's have a look back to 1996. Please welcome <laughs> Vivian Bailey.
Vivian and Mel, back in the days when we were in the Manor Pavilion. There have been a number of dancers who've gone above and beyond in spreading Morris further afield to distant shores. The first winner of the competition we saw earlier, Andrew Jones, is now in Los Angeles. Our next dancer, who many will know and remember from being very much UK and Devon based, is now in the States. Our dancer, Christian Youngberg, musician Corey Walters, with Marlborough Morris as the team, dancing Sherborne, and the jig is The Rising Sun. Coming live from Greenfield in America, please welcome Christine. I'll say that again, Crispin Youngberg and Coey Walters. <laughs> Crispin Youngberg and Coe Walters. This situation we're in has spurred some people who wouldn't enter normally or couldn't be here to enter, which is fantastic. There have been some others who are not happy with the idea of not having a live audience to perform to or struggling with the technology. But to see 10 entrants in the single and six in the double is a great, great achievement. We have just one more entry in the solo contest. As I mentioned before, we're going to be running straight through. There's not going to be a five or 10 minute break. The bar at the Blackmore is going to be sadly depleted from customers, but that's the way things are. We only have so long and we're gonna keep moving. So let's have the last contestants in the solo jig competition. The dancer, Mossy Christian. The musician, Edwin Besant. The team, Bishops Morris, Leddington Tradition. And the dances, Highland Mary. Please will you welcome Mossy Christian and Edwin Besant.
Mossy Christian and Edwin Besant. We have over 200 live viewers on Facebook, which is fantastic, and an unknown number on YouTube. I guess three or 4,000, but I, who knows? Uh, I see a comment from Nicky Hampson. Yeah, but you can't usually do your ironing while you're at the jig competition. If only we'd known, we'd have had ironing boards and irons set up years ago. But if that's how you rock and roll, enjoy. We're going to move on. Well, move back, in fact, to a dancer who we have as a judge this year, who we all know, or many of you know, Simon Pipe. I mentioned earlier that he had won the solo competition five times, and we've gone back to the first time he won in 1995. So a young Simon Pipe with musician Julian Dury. Have a watch of this. Please welcome and Simon Pipe. For the first Pipe. time in the G competition, we have a backpipes G. This G is entirely written by the dancer himself, bar four steps. Again, I'll ask you to tell me which ones they are later. Um, and there's one particular point to note that during the hopscotch steps, at no time should the backer pipes come in contact with the dancer's face. <laughs> <laughs> the dancer is Simon Pipe, the musician Julian Julian Jury from Tony Stratford Mice. Simon Pipe and Julian Drury. 
Normally, one would say, I bet he wish he could do that now, but of course, Simon no doubt still can. Before we go to the doubles competition, we're going to have a brief word from Mr. John Braithwaite, Festival Director. I'd like to welcome you now to a special guest to this competition, a word from our Festival Director. I'll hand you over now to Mr. John Braithwaite. Good afternoon, everyone, everywhere across the world and outside, probably. Um, <clears throat> it's tremendous for me. I, I'm, I'm so pleased that the jig competition is not losing its unbroken record and it's still taking place. Uh, for me, uh, as many of you will know, Morris and jig dancing um, is really at the heart of the way I love folk. And so it's been wonderful to see the jig competition grow, uh, mature, and create the level of uh, the standard that it is now famous for around the world. So we're, we're so pleased that we have the jig competition with us and hopefully forever. And it, uh, it is a, an integral part of what we call special Sidmouth. But many of you will <clears throat> have been to Sidmouth or have seen the jig competition before being streamed around the world. And you'll be aware that um, this year is a particularly trying one. And without going into great detail about that, which you don't need anyway, um, we've had to go through a crowdfunding exercise and are still going through it. In fact, the crowdfunder will finish uh, in about uh, 24 hours, 36 hours from when you're seeing this recording. Um, it has been in place for about three, four weeks now, and it's done fine, but we need your help. Uh, in keeping the festival going for its security, really. Uh, we will have a festival in 2021, no doubt about that. But its, its future needs to be secure. And a year like we've had with the, virtually no revenue uh, needs something like the crowdfunder to keep it moving. So, of course, I'm urging you to help us out. Um, there are some wonderful re uh, rewards, I hope, uh, still available which I think you will find interesting, a lot of rewards from the generosity, huge generosity, not just of people pledging donations, but huge generosity from artists all over the folk world, providing us with um, uh, merchandise, uh, signed opportunities, things like the opportunity to sing on the next uh, um, Fisherman's Friends, uh, CD, which <laughs> will be something I'm afraid that you will, not, the rest of you will not be able to take part in because uh, it's gone. Uh, in fact, it went very quickly. So a number of things have been and gone, but there are still lots of interesting rewards that you could have a look at if you just feel that you want to support the festival and there's plenty of opportunity to do that. So can I thank again uh, everyone who's involved in the jig competition and has been involved in it. Those guys who are involved technically, which is a real challenge this year, uh, to Tracy and Chris, of course, for putting it on, and uh, for you for being the audience, uh, however many. I'd love to know how many uh, we actually get. Maybe in a few minutes, Chris and I might speculate about how many thousand people are going to be watching. But uh, thank you very much indeed for the opportunity, Chris and Tracy, to talk to your audience and to encourage them to take part in the crowdfunder. Give it your best. Thank you. Thank you, John. John Braithwaite. And I'm ever thankful that the festival director is an old mate and a Morris dancer or ex-Morris dancer. And that always helps our cause. We're going to move into the doubles now, but before we go into the doubles competition, again, a look back at the history. And the first year that we held the doubles competition was in 2001. Having run for a number of years, we were looking at ways of expanding the competition, and doubles seemed like an obvious idea. The first double jig winners, and 
many of you may remember this, were Jameson and Simon Wooders with musician Gareth Kidier. So please welcome Jameson, Simon and Gareth. The, the next pair, we do have a new entrant in Amsterdam. Uh, we have Jameson Wooders, who has a uh, seasoned inter-competitor and winner at times of the solo competition, who uh, danced this time with Simon, his brother, and uh, musician Gareth Kidier. Uh, Jameson, Simon. Simon is the one with the real beard. That's the way you can tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth is the one with no hair at all. They will dance with Dwight Stranger, and they are from the course. <laughs> The Brothers Wooders and Gareth Kidier from 2001. Let's move on to this year's competition and in time honored fashion we start with last year's winners. And last year's winners were Simon and Molly Pipe, as has been mentioned earlier, musician Mark Rogers from the Outside Capering Crew, and the dance is The Flowing Dance. Please welcome Simon, Molly and Mark. This is Evan, Simon, Molly. I'd just like to say, as I'm driving here, it's not an intentional, but I remember. 
Pipe setting the bar really high, about five foot one and four foot eleven from memory. Not forgetting, of course, musician Mark Rogers, who arguably has more competition winners' medals than anybody in the years he's been playing for many, many dancers. Let's move straight in to the first contestants for the double jig competition 2020. And the dancers are Jenny Cahill and Emma Warren, musician Kim Landberger. They are from Glory of the West and the tradition Ascot under Witchwood. The dance is Jockey to the Fair. So will you please give a big welcome to Jenny Cahill, Emma Warren and Kim Landberger.
Jenny Cahill, Emma Warren and Kim Landberger starting off our competition for the doubles this year. And the doubles competition has provided us with unique problems or challenges in as much as there are only so many households that happen to have two dancers and one musician in the same bubble. So more frequently the dancers are in different places, the musician perhaps in a third place. We have six entries, four of them will be recorded, two of them will be live, so we'll see how that goes. And a big thank you for everybody who's managed to find ways to make this work. It's very diff difficult to practice a double jig when you're in different places. Uh, a unique challenge that hopefully we won't have next year or any time in the future. Our second entry. The dancers are Eliza Godsmark and Georgette Godsmark. Musician Dave Hood. The team Winterbourne Morris. Tradition at Bampton and the dance... Back a pipe. Please welcome Eliza, Georgette and Dave. <laughs> Eliza Gosmark, Georgette Gosmark and Dave Hood and those dancers are aged 8 and 10 and I think we'd all agree it's wonderful to see young people dancing jigs, dancing any form of Morris and what a great thing to have an after school club teaching jig dancing. If that's not happening at your children's school then campaign for it, it should be happening everywhere. There's a bright future for Morris dancing and jig dancing if it's taught in schools and people find as much fun as they clearly do doing it. Excellent, moving on. Our next contestant are Ollie Wintle and Pete Austin, dancers. David Wintle is a musician. They're from Nightlow Morris Men, the tradition of Field Town and Ascot under Witchwood, and the jig is The Nutting Girl. So will you please give a big welcome to Ollie, Pete and David. Hey everyone, we are Pete Austin, Ollie Wintle and David Wintle performing in the John Gasson Gig Moor competition on behalf of Nightly Morris Men, Field Town and Ashcott under Witchwood Nutting Girl Jigs. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Holly Wintle, Pete Austin and David Wintle. Before we go on to the next entry, we've always in this competition had a good mix of male and female dancers. And in the early years, the winners were male until Sue Graham came along and won as a solo dancer. And then a year or so later, Sue Graham and Tracy Seelig were the first female doubles winners. And so we've earthed up a copy of them dancing in 2002, first female winners of the doubles competition with the ubiquitous Mark Rogers as musician. Please welcome Tracy, Sue and Mark. Sue and Mark from 2002. Our next dancers are John and Emma Melville with Toby Melville as musician. The team First Class Stamp, the Tradition Field Town and the jig is Molly Oxford. Please welcome John, Emma and Toby.
John Melville and Emma Melville, musician Toby Melville. I mentioned that it was challenging to find a bubble where you have two dancers and a musician, but if you try hard enough, you can do it. And Emma learnt to dance Cotswold just so that they could enter as a double with Toby as musician, who I believe also dances a bit. Moving on, our next dancer, dancers, Paul Thomas and Sue Thomas, musician Sue Beecroft from Misfit Molly, the tradition Molly. I'm going to say this next bit with some trepidation. The jig is entitled Lockdown. The last time I mentioned that, I got it wrong because it was wrong, but that's what I have written down here, so I think this is where it's meant to be. A dance called Lockdown. Please will you give a big welcome to Paul Thomas, Sue Thomas, and Sue Beecroft. Sue Thomas and Sue Beecroft. Now, just an observation, and, and I could be biased here as a Molly dancer myself, but it seems to me, just looking at this contest, that adult Molly dancers are taking COVID more seriously. They're the only ones definitely wearing masks and, and visors for the musician. And is, is that something that's unique to Molly dancing? Is there some research that shows that Molly dancers are more prone to catching COVID than Cotswold dancers? Does having bells on confer some protection against, who knows? Just an observation. We have just one set of contestants left in this double jig contest, and they are dancers, David Thompson and Ross Adamson, musician John Watcham, they are from Brighton Morris, dancing Bledington. The jig is Princess Royal. Will you please give a big welcome to David Thompson, Ross Adamson, John Watcham. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
David Thompson, Ross Adamson, and John Watcham. What's interesting about that is that we saw a pre-recorded video of that double and also the solo earlier from the same location, and it was very windy. And this was done live and exactly the same weather, just as windy. It must be a good site for a windmill, I think, wherever it is. We now come to the time when you can cast your vote. We've had all ten solo and six double contests. And on the screen now you should see all 16 of them. So can you comment with your favourite dancer or dancers and just the number, a number between 1 and 16? It's not going to be purely based on your votes, but that is going to be a considerable, considerable part of the judging. So as many as possible, let's have your votes now. The judges are going to have, as ever, a serious job in judging this contest, and they are busy doing that now we are going to have some entertainment, and that entertainment is from one of our own, somebody who is no stranger to this contest, no stranger to dancing and winning this contest, now making his way as a musician and doing a fine job of it, as I'm sure you'll see. Please give a big welcome to Ben Moss. I'm now live. Lovely. Hello everyone. I'm hoping you can hear me. Um, I don't know that for sure and there's no way of me knowing that for sure. Um, I don't know if you're hearing me through this mic or through the mic on my laptop. I don't know if you've got confused and turned the sound down on your laptop. Um, I can't help you in some of those instances. Sounds great, says Will. Lovely. So, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, hi everyone. Thank you to those of you who've tuned in to join us for the online John Gasson jig competition. Um, yeah, my name's Ben Moss. Those of you who are regulars will maybe recognize me from the odd jig here or there over the past few years. But I'm here now to guide you through this strange purgatory zone where we wait for the judges to make their deliberations and then get back to us. It's okay. It's a tense time, but if we pull together, I think we can get through it. Some of you are going to think someone was robbed. You're not all going to be happy with the outcome. I can guarantee it. But, you know, just, just stay calm, have a drink, and, um, you know, just remember it's all about taking part, really, in the end. Um, so I'm going to sing some songs to distract you from this um, terrible tension we're all feeling. Mm. Um from my album which was out last year the album is called lost lands the first song on it is called bold reynard it's uh it's a uh, it's an ode to the noble english fox um so i'm just very paranoid that yeah i mean everyone seems everyone i'm not getting messages saying you can't hear me so um i am gonna crack on and uh sing you some songs this is bold reynard a song about a fox. 
you sh hopefully you can hear the fiddle. Again, not much I can do if you can't. In days of old, there lived a king, a king in England's country fair. In every forest, copse and glen, this king would take his royal share. Neither gentry find their private lands, nor the common fields in common hands could e'er escape his roving eye, bold Reynard and his kingly ties. And the bugle horn did merry cry to sound the hunting call. Bold Reynard with his wits so fine, he did evade them all. His coat of burnished amber made did shine like fire atop the hill. To put the golden sun to shame As o'er his back he slung his kill Though the huntsman's hounds did him pursue Both brook and briar and bramble through He yet retained his liberty Bold Reynard still is roaming free the bugle horn did merry cry to sound the hunting call. Bold Reynard with his wits so fine, he did evade them all. And English hearts no longer have time nor care For either forest, copse or glen Of which bold Reynard has his share The city now spreads o'er the land No common fields for common hands And Reynard's fate is sore unkind his kingdom now he leaves behind And the bugle horn did merry cry To sound the hunting call Bold Reynard with his wits so fine He did evade them all So now our king his lands has lost And swiftly comes his cruel demise The cold dark streets his only realm And table scraps his only prize His fiery mane once a royal cloak now turning grey with dust and smoke As now he wanders door to door And sips the morning dew no more And the bugle horn is silent now No more the hunt to call Bold Reynard now, a king dethroned, must as a beggar crawl. <sighs> I'll, I'll pause while, while you all share your appreciation in whatever way you... See fit for a minute there. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, coming through the interface sounds good. Yeah, but hey. Um, that was a song called Bold Reynards from my album. Um, if any, uh, nah, we'll, 
We're gonna try and sell some merch. Nah, it's all right. Let's focus on the good stuff. Um, I'm gonna play some. Gonna play some tunes for you next. I've got 20 minutes. I thought I could rattle through four and not talk, or I could do three and really try and kill some time in between. So I hope it's it's becoming obvious which which of those two options I settled for in the end. Hasn't it been nice to, um, sorry, I'm just, I'm very, oh, the vocals are clipping slightly. Thank you, James, if I have control of that. I hope so. Maybe that'll be better. These are some tunes anyway. No vocals. Um, it's been really nice seeing some of these old archive jigs, hasn't it? Um, of years gone by. Um, you know, I feel it's a shame they didn't manage to find time to to show any videos from the years like 2007 I heard was a good one, 2009, 2011, 2013 was good, 2015 I think as well. Um, you know, shame they didn't find time to see any of the winners from those years, but good videos all the same, I think we can all agree. Um, so I'm going to play some tunes actually, slightly linked to the jig competition. Um, because in 2017, I believe, um, I wrote a jig to the tune I had written for my nephew, Arthur, who was born the previous year. Is that right? Yes, he's four this year. Yeah. Um, this is him in this little picture here. What a cutie. We can all agree. We all love looking at pictures of other people's babies. That's the one thing we all know in this life. Um, not my baby, just to be clear, my, my brother's baby. Um, so I wrote a, uh, I wrote a tune when he was born and then I wrote a jig for that tune and entered it in the jig competition the next summer in the single and came second with it, which, you know, is all right, but makes you wonder whether, whether it was worth it having him in the first place, really. But, um, you know, I'm sure it's been a question mark hanging over hanging over my brother's family's heads for ever since that moment. But you know, it's okay. He's, he's, he's cute in other ways, I guess. He's found a way to contribute to society. Um, anyway, I think that's enough rambling to, to take me up to 20 minutes once I've done three numbers. So I'm gonna play um, that song, that tune, which is for Arthur. And then I'm also gonna play another tune after it, which is for Cassie, which is the tune I wrote for the birth of my niece. Uh, but I haven't written a jig for it yet, but maybe one day. <laughs>
there we go. That was for Arthur and for Cassie. And it was for Arthur and for Cassie. Who maybe no, they're probably not watching. I think their parents are moving a house next coming week. They're probably very busy. Um, so I think I'm probably just going to play one more song for you. Unless I'm being told to get the hell off, Ben. Lots of messages. Um, okay, lovely, fine. I'm just getting very paranoid that everyone's texting me saying, sounds awful, Ben. But no, you're all being very kind. Um, one last song. Um, as I said... Um, my album was out last year. Um, I was hoping to be doing lots of gigs this year to try and sell some of the thousand copies of it I have currently in my room. Um, obviously that isn't happening. So if anyone out there has enjoyed, enjoyed these little ditties, um, then feel free to order one. You can get it on Bandcamp if you don't want a hard copy. I have got a hard copy here. This is what it looks like. Isn't it nice? Beautiful. Um, you know, got to earn my crust these days. Um, although actually I've been down, uh, I've been donating any um, CD sales to various causes the last few months. Um, for any Bandcamp sales or CD sales in August, I'm going to be donating all profits to Shelter because we live in a slightly poorly run country. I would say. Maybe that's not a controversial statement. I hope not. Um, and uh, there's a homelessness crisis looming because uh, if they don't extend the ban on evictions, lots of people who haven't been able to afford rent because of coronavirus are going to be evicted from their houses. And there's going to be an enormous homelessness crisis in this country. Um, I'm sure our government will do something about it because why wouldn't they? Um, but any money I get is going to go to shelter, so feel free to... Buy some music with a good cause in mind. Anyway, I'm going to just plough straight on and sing this last song. It's called The Sturdy Oak. Again, it's on the album. Available from No Good Record Stores. It goes a bit like this. so tall and from those lofty branches a fragile acorn falls so young so new this life half formed must suddenly somehow put down his roots find space to grow in the shade of his father's bow Soon that sapling comes in view, I'm striving for the sun. And while he's lashed by wind and rain, must choose what he'll become. But though the sky is high and wide and offers endless choices, I'm rooted to the spot I'm in by a hundred doubting voices. Will I grow up to be a soldier or a sailor Like we're told in all the tales of old Or will I break bonds And say I must be strong And choose my own path up towards the sun And will we ever settle differences With words instead of guns and when the soak is called upon to bear a little weight Oh, when my true love leans upon me Will I bend or bray? Though I built these rings around my heart And toughened up my skin That sapling 
straining against the wind still lies somewhere within my brittle bark i must be sure should never cause her harm as now our branches interweave and bind us arm in arm will she have a room to blossom now as we grow old as one will my embrace help her to thrive or will my leaves block out her sun my tears they fall like leaves caught in the autumn breeze when i see what this world asks of me will i ever be enough i hope that i could be enough to give her everything she's waiting on to be strong enough to catch her tears but not afraid shed my own and when at last my time has come to pass on all i know as my own son puts down his roots will he have room to grow Set roots, this thickened skin, my strength no longer needed. The message came too late for me. Will he have time to heed it? The ground that we are rooted in these days is ever shifting. Will we learn how to change our place or just be dead with drifting? This world is full of sturdy oaks who grew so tall and strong And they crowd out the horizon as he struggles to belong I wish that I could give them all the answers But I no longer know the questions And the best that I can give is time and space to live and to pick him up when he has fallen low and to hope that how to be a man is something he might know thank you so much um all the best to everyone who entered the jig competition. Well done to everyone for making it happen. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure to do my first solo gig in about five months. Um, and yeah, I've had a great time. I um, hope you've all had fun watching. I've been Ben Moss. Back to you in the studio. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, Mr. Ben Moss a sometime winner of the competition solo and double in every odd year from what he said and how did we manage not to get a video of him okay we're going to in a little while move on to the prizes but before we do that the judges have finished their deliberating so we're going to hand over to our chief judge continuation judge to give some comments so please welcome Jackie Oates. We're just trying to find Jackie on the Zoom. Oh, there we go. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give you a, a few comments. We've really, really enjoyed watching the performances this afternoon. And um, 
it's totally different this year to last year. It's been fascinating to see how the digs have come across over the medium of the internet rather than live. Uh, but lots of the same things still apply. So last year, we talked a lot about um, communication with the audience, eye contact, um, things that just lift you above kind of the basic styles of the dancing. So I'm going to talk about music first because that's my area. Um, it was fascinating listening to the music over the internet because much more sort of subtle aspects came across. So there was some really beautiful, beautiful playing and all the ornaments really stood out. Um, it worked well when you could see the musician in the shot. I think, because you could see how they were connecting with the dancers as well. And that sort of added to the overall feel um, where that wasn't possible. I think thinking about the volume of the music really sort of added to the dance. So there are a few dances where uh, the violin was really turned up and that worked well. Um, talking about the dancing, um, you dance with your eyes and your smile as well as with your arms and your legs. Think about how you communicate with each other and with your musician. Uh, it works so beautifully having the different settings and the, the beautiful backdrops. Um, so yeah, I think we, we really, really enjoyed watching them all and it's been really hard to kind of differentiate between everything. Thank you, Jackie. And we're now ready for the prizes, the award ceremony. We're going to start, and by the way, we can't hear you, but we're expecting that you're going to be drum roll on the knees, cheers and whoops and hollers, wherever you are. Let's get into the spirit of this. And we're going to start with the best new entrant. Best new entrant is... Rick Titley Sage. Excellent. <laughs> Moving on to the best over 40. Best over 40. And we have joint winners for this. And the joint winners of the best over 40 are... <laughs> Ross Adamson and David Thompson. <laughs> well done, guys. Moving on to the audience appeal. And the audience appeal hotly contested. And the winners of the audience appeal are... <laughs> Mossy Christian and Edwin Besant. And well done, guys. We'll do the doubles contest as per usual first and then move on to the solos. And in both, we're going to do third, second, and first. So, the John Gass and Jig Competition Doubles Contest 2020, third place is... John and Emma Melville and Toby Melville. Well done, that team. In second place, we have Jenny Cahill, Emma Warren, and Kim Landberger. And let's get ready to make the whoops and cheers louder for the winners of the John Gassenjig Competition Doubles Competition 2020. And the winners are... David Thompson, Ross Adamson, and John Watcham dancing in breezy conditions and doing a lovely job of it. Well done, guys. Congratulations to all of the entries in those contests. And we can see the successful team there. Well done, guys. I wish in all of this, of course, that we were present in one place, particularly a marquee in Devon to be doing this in person and uh, next year we'll be there but for now this is what we can do 
Let's move on to the solos, the John Gasson 2020 solo jig competition. And in third place we have... Rick Titley Sage. Well done, Rick. Two awards there, best new entrant and third in the solos. In second place in the solos, we have... Mossy Christian and Edwin Besant. Well done, guys. And the winners of the John Gasson Solo Jig Contest 2020 are... Crispin Walker and Coy Walters. Yay, well done, guys. All the way from stateside. Here are the winners. Excellent, I hope you're still cheering wherever you are. And we can see them over there. Nice one, guys. All socially distanced, masked up. Fantastic. Congratulations, and again, I wish you could be with us in person. But that may have been more difficult anyway, so uh, well done, and we'll, we will definitely get the trophies to you, or a picture of them, something like that. <laughs> Wonderful. It's been a great contest. It's been different. It's been challenging. It's been rewarding. And we have an enormous amount of effort put in from a whole team of people. So I'd like to do some thank yous now to, to round up. And firstly, as ever, let's thank the judges because that was never going to be an easy task and wasn't. So our judges, Jackie Oates, Sally Waring, Reese Borman and Simon Pipe. Thank you to all of them. <laughs> our entertainment. Ben Moss, big round of applause, cheers, whoops and whatever for Ben Moss. <laughs> Behind the scenes, we had a whole tech team. We had Owen Borman, Kerry Fletcher, also helped by judges Rhys Borman and Simon Pipe, a lot of deliberating, spending time working things out, helping with adverts, helping with tech, uh, lots and lots of help. We had a Zoom master, Alan Data Bragg, who's a friend from a speaking club, knows nothing about Morris, it's a bit of a wake up for him, but brilliant Zoom master, thank you, Alan. And masterminding the live streaming, sound, lights, camera, action, Manning Mission Control, a massive thanks to William Rose. Thanks, Will. And last, but not remotely least, Organiser-in-Chief, the driving force behind this contest and present, past and future of this contest. And I'm going to hand you over to her for some final words. Let's hear it for Tracy Rose. Hi. Um, this has been... A brilliant competition, very different to everything we've done before. And um, I am so pleased to all of those contestants that took up the challenge when we knew Sidmouth was being cancelled and we had to find a way to keep everybody dancing. And they've done brilliantly. You know, it has been really hard for them. They've been challenging, they've overcome it. Teams have written their own dances in lockdown and it's been great. And I have great respect for them for doing this. Next year, hopefully we'll be back in our marquee um, and I've, everyone can start thinking about that now, start practicing for it. Um, it's been brilliant. I am so grateful to everybody that has really put in the effort for this. They have gone the, so much more than the normal amount that we do. Thanks to Chris for emceeing um, our living room. I love the curtains like that. Brilliant green screen. And the biggest thanks goes to William, who without this, we could not have done it. He has been amazing. So, <laughs> so I, hope you have a, <laughs> I hope you have a lovely rest of the weekend. Um, missing Sidmouth desperately, but we'll all be together again soon. Thank you. And one final, final word. Uh, the marquee is needed for the next event, so please can you clear the marquee as quickly as possible? Uh, drink up and get the marquee empty. Move along, please. We've got another show on. Thank you very much for your time. And 
let's go over to the concert for any of you who want to continue the fun. And don't forget the Sidmouth Crowdfunder. Find it and help support the future of the festival. So from all of us, thank you. And that's all, folks.